yet another Kodak Retina Reflex S camera here for servicing. This one, let's have a quick look over it. The window on the meter dial here, that's cracked. Given the state of those brakes, I expect that would fall to bits. That'll have to be replaced. The camera body, some unusual Zeiss bumps on the base there. Missing the leatherette patch on the arm, and I'd say that's been missing for a long time because that metal is quite polished from use. So it hasn't had the leatherette patch there for a little while, I'd say. Corrosion. Yeah, there's certainly corrosion to be seen around the edges of the body. Up around the top here between the chrome top and that chrome trim. All around the camera. So there's certainly an element of corrosion here. Surface corrosion. Some of that green stuff might go away. Some of it might not. You can see a bit of green stuff around the eyepiece there too. Anything else? Well the meter's lively. Whether it's lively enough remains to be seen. It's a possibility. Some of them are still good. The lens. Very dusty. There's a lot of marks on the coating there too, which may or may not clean off. Some of those appear to be on the outside surface of the lens. Some of them may be internal. A bit difficult to say. You can see the back of this lens here. A lot of surface corrosion there. The diaphragm opens and closes smoothly. This one controls the depth of field pointers and that is stiff. Doesn't drop all the way back to uh, the closed position either. So that lens is going to need a little bit of attention I'd say. Bit of gravel rash there on the edge where the lens has been dropped but nothing too dramatic. How does it function? Let's select a nice slow shutter speed. I think it does function. Oh look, it's not, yeah, it's thinking about going. It's closed, it hasn't opened and fired. No, not this time. Maybe next time. Yeah, it's not opening and closing again. So it's just, we get a single clunk. Anything to see in the back of the camera? Not really. Look at that white stuff on the end of that um, thing there. I don't know whether that's mildew or corrosion. A bit odd. Otherwise it's no worse than usual in there. A little bit of dust and dirt. One lonely bump on the back. All in all, it's a good candidate for servicing, I think. I'll have a quick look at that state of that prism. Excuse me while I hold this up to the light. Um, yeah, silvering's going. There's some dark patches in there. And, of course, it has the mildew spots, which is um, a common feature for these reflexes. So, to the disassembly. I'll start at the top of the camera, open the back, something through the fork of the rewind, unscrew the rewind knob, lift off the rewind knob, and the spacer from underneath it, pop those to one side. This screw here, this pinhead screw, I've got a screwdriver to do that. That's polished chrome, that screw scratches very easily and as a result is not uncommonly scratched up. Take out these other chrome screws from the top cover. 
one at the end, two at the rewind end. Lift off the top cover. Oh, that's a beautiful example. Take off that, recover the spring. Look at the state of that prism. Now that looks like uh, wool or something, doesn't it? It's not. It's tiny needles. It's, it's some crystalline growth. Um, very interesting. I've got no idea what it is. It's something to do with the coating that's on top of the silver. Um, whether it's uh, an asphaltum type substance, I don't know. What those needles are is absolutely anyone's guess. I hope it's not blue asbestos. That I'll have to get all that rubbish away, of course. I'm going to remove the three screws from the prism that hold it to the body. On the Reflex S you usually need to advance the film advance slightly so that the arm that moves the frame counter swings out of the way. So I'm just going to swoop, get that out of the way so I can lift the prism assembly out from the camera. There's nothing particularly to see with that. I know it's going to need a new prism, regardless of its um, mystery growth. Our top cover, fairly unremarkable, certainly going to need that window replaced. Mirror looks good, there's a few marks on the mirror, but they are um, that, that's a good example and of course that'll have no effect at all on your images and not really any effect on the viewing to tell the truth. The mirror is well away from the plane of focus on the focus screen. You wouldn't even be aware of that looking through the uh, finder. I'll just get some of these components put aside for cleaning. Okay, well, while we're at the top, let's get a few of these stray screws out of the way. Whoops. I'll take this strap plug off. And the rewind can come off too. So the functional faults with this camera, I think you would say the headline functional fault is that the shutter doesn't work. It uh, makes some interesting noises, but doesn't actually do the job. Let me put that top cover back on there temporarily and Start work at the bottom of the camera, taking pieces off there. Really, I just don't want to disturb the meter at this point. So I can take it apart in a neat and tidy fashion. So, three screws here on the advance lever. No problem with that by the looks of it. Um, that should be good. This piece we want off next, this of course is the uh, 
cover for our back catch release and that does not want to move. Cover those screws and the spring in particular I'll put to one side keep all my springs together and these two pieces typically do not go through the cleaner uh, this piece in particular you'd end up losing your black arrow if it went through the ultrasonic cleaner I want the leatherette off the base of the camera next Right, let's see if we can get this Zeiss, Zeiss bump infested leatherette off the base of that too much drama. Oh, I saw a puff of dust come out from underneath that as the leatherette lifted. It suggests corrosion. Yeah, oh, that's not too bad. Bit of grime there. Certainly that'll need some cleaning up. And the chrome trim needs to come off. You need to take some care removing the chrome trim from the base because there's a spring under it that operates the catch for the capping plate and if you're not aware of it you might not see it you can tip the camera up the spring would fall out roll away and you'll be none the wiser you'll never know it was there except that the camera won't work properly when you put it back together so this chrome trim on the base of the camera is obviously going to need some cleaning. I can't immediately decide whether it's been the camera's been serviced before and it's had got the remains of two lots of adhesive or whether that's just the original adhesive. There's that spring I mentioned. Pop that carefully to one side. Right, the leatherette from the front of the camera. Now we can get under this easily now. So I'm just lifting this with my scalpel. Some of it's coming away very readily. Some of it not so much. Yeah, as I slide that scalpel under it, I'm using the scalpel as much as a lever as anything else to lift that leatherette away. It's often stuck around that boss, that's not unusual. There's even some a crease or some distortion across the leatherette here. Leatherettes tend to shrink over time or tip or try to shrink back so where something is trapped over a boss like that it's not uncommon for the leatherette to actually tear or at least the hole to go somewhat egg shaped okay so that's that free i'm working my way down to the edge here that edge that sharp rolled edge 
the leatherette's often very well stuck over places like that. Okay, so that's off. This stuff is corrosion. That light coloured stuff is corrosion products. You can see it on the body of the camera there. And this leatherette on this side, which is basically the same deal. And it's got a, it's well stuck at a point right there. I'll come in from the top edge here and see if I can get under that. And as it, at the other end of the camera it's stuck well by that edge, then it pops off. And you can see corrosion products and dirt and rubbish there. That part's good. I'll remove the front rings from the shutter. Now they looks like they've been locked in with a touch of lacquer, so I'll use a touch of acetone to soften that, so I'm not fighting with my screwdriver. You have to be very cautious when you're splashing solvents like acetone around on a camera. Um, it's not going to hurt metal components, but it's not very nice on leatherettes or paint sometimes. Let's remove these three screws. The control rings on the front of the camera are often quite stiff. They gather up uh, dust over time and Sometimes a bit of corrosion, lubricants get sticky, and as a result, the rings don't move as smoothly as they should be. Right, let's have them off. We'll just have those off as a set. I'll deal with those later. I'll just put them in another container. Right, off with that little pinion. And this shaft here couples to the meter cord drum. So I want that out because otherwise when I remove this, the meter cord drum will come with it. Uh, that top cover is just sitting there. We can have that off now. We're done with that. Four screws hold the front in place. Now yeah, there'll be either 8 or 12 cupped washers under there, spring washers. They're used to hold the front out firmly against the screws and the setting there determines the lens mount to film plane distance. Okay, so that should be good. If I pull that back, I should be able to lift the front off the camera. Here we go. So here's our shutter assembly. And it's controls at the back of the shutter. And I can tell you by the, the way that that's oozing slowly back there, that that's, this is where our stickiness mostly is in terms of that reluctant shutter. Um, the shutter itself appeared to function. The control gear on the back was the problem. You can see a bit of um, dust and rubbish is collected there on that gear. Let's recover these dish washers. These have all been put in place with wax.
And I'm just trying to see how many I've got here. That's five. Yeah, it's sort of been put in in a bit of a, a random fashion. I think I'm short one somewhere. Oh yeah, here's a couple. That'll explain it. So I've got 12 of those dish washers. That's okay. Repairers often use wax to hold them in place um, just because it can be awkward getting the front back on without disturbing anything. Now I'm just going to hold that mirror down out of the way and recover the front cam and this piece here this is the cam that operates our mirror and capping plate and also takes the action through to the front cam where the, cock the, the shutter is cocked that looks fine now I want to remove the meter so I'm going to unhook that spring to take the tension off this, lift the drum off, now I think this cord was silk, it's exceptionally strong. Meter cords do break, usually there's a, a good reason why that happened, often you can see it. One of the ways you can kill them instantly is by removing the front control rings on the shutter. That little felt uh, pad there has just fallen off. That was sitting up here and the meter cord runs between them. Yeah, if somebody removes those front rings on the shutter in order to clean them, doesn't take note of where everything was before they took it apart, puts them back in the wrong place, They'll get into a situation where you can turn the wheel on the base of the camera. It doesn't come to a hard stop because you haven't reached the hard stop. It reaches the end of the cord first and then the cord snaps. So when everything's assembled correctly, the cord's not under an awful lot of stress. At the top of the camera is our film release button, our shutter release and its return spring. All these springs I don't put through the cleaner. There's no, no particular point in that. I will be moving, removing the mirror while I'm working on the camera because it's exceptionally easy to make a mess of that. All you have to do is inadvertently pick up the cam, get your finger on it while you're trying to manipulate the camera and you end up with a finger mark and that's a surface silvered mirror, in other words, or first surface mirror, the mirror, the silver is on the outside surface and it's very, very delicate. Just removing this strap lug from this end and then I should be able to lift out that cocking rack. Always aware if there's any shim washers underneath something like that. Occasionally you may find them. The rack, well, they're usually pretty sound. And that one looks okay. And it's so dirty I can't really tell any more than that. That chrome trim can come off and that's certainly going to need some cleaning. And the rest of the film advanced stuff. Alright, so that screw there. The lock lever is currently locked, the film advance, so I was able to unscrew that without any fighting. That's the gear that drives our cocking rack. All of these pieces need to come off because the grease that's on there is is just dried up over time it gets thick it becomes like a go like goes like a hard wax left long enough it'll get even worse than that and 
lose all its lubrication qualities at all. I'll just recover the spring from this screw. That operates the pull here, which ensures that the film advance can only move in one direction. Take that screw out. All right, at the base of the camera, I want to remove my rewind button. I'm just going to tuck my mirror down out of the way so that it's not resting on the bench when I put it down like that. <laughs> 